Well, it's a beautiful Sunday evening, and you are most welcome to the Upside Down Show. My name is Fema Edunami. And mine is Nana Tufo. It's always a pleasure to come into your beautiful homes to serve you nothing but total entertainment. That's our business here on the Upside Down Show. The show is brought to you by Vodafone, and Vodafone says together we can. Mm -hmm. Stay with us when we come back as a roller coaster ride. Coming up on the Upside Down Show, we have a conversation with celebrated UK-based photographer, J.O.T. Photography, about life in the photography industry. And later, we have a conversation with legendary veteran artist and former member of a CBSR group, a man with over 40 years in the Ghanaian music industry, Bessa Simons. We speak to him on music, creating some iconic hits, amongst many others. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. All right, welcome back, guys. This is the Upside Down Show here on City TV and brought to you by Vodafone. And 2022, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's very obvious that, I mean, social media is going to be bigger, greater, yeah. you know, yeah. and even more um, beneficial mm -hmm. to people yeah. because now social media is everything if mm -hmm. we have superstars yeah. on social media you should think that it is a real big deal exactly and so anybody and everybody connected to it mm -hmm. i just want to get closer to the them, potential is big know? i mean so yeah. yeah you need to take advantage and shoot your shots when Absolutely. you have the opportunity now, talking about <laughs> shooting our shots you know i think now everybody is trying to be a photographer kind of you yeah, know because yeah. trying to take um mm -hmm. millions of pictures yeah. and then just getting one out Sift of them you know them. sometimes yeah. the way you pose to take uh, mm -hmm. selfies and you can yeah. take about 500 <laughs> pictures only one will come out so well but when you have people who are talented yeah. who are passionate about mm -hmm. what they do you know sometimes i really ask myself what is the motivation yeah. behind being yeah. a photographer you mm -hmm. know especially people who can travel miles and miles away yeah. just to go take something with nature exactly. they they have a way of thinking exactly. you know but you, they come you, you out you think it's abstract awesome. but then the yeah, beauty of yeah. it engages you and then it's thought provoking so you, you could just look at a wall as an individual and not see that one thing that strikes exactly but such a person sits behind this same wall is able to picture it first in their head and then able to frame it and capturing no, it in are, such are, a way that creativity and it's just, it's just amazing this world, it's just amazing know. we have a professional and enthusiast a passionate Photographer joining us in studio. Give it up for Joe Photographer. Yes, 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 thank yes, you, yes, thank yes, you, yes, 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 yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Bearded man. Yeah. <laughs> and he's bald as well. But, you know, there's something about guys, you know, so I'm, I'm just talking for people, mm -hmm. you know, it's not me. But there's something about bald guys, you know, who have a bit of beard, you know, mm. it's some way be, you know, Usually they Tell are kind of cute. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. The way Nicholas is looking at me with his punk, you know. You, you probably go <laughs> bald shave tomorrow. on his head. But, but, but hey. But wait, I mean, I wear mine as a style. Are you bald? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. I am not bald. I wear mine as a style. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah. Great. But you have a nice way of, you know, wearing your bald head. It's mm -hmm. nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. But photography, yeah. you know, is there money in the business? There is. There is. Um, mm -hmm. I've been doing it for 11 years now. Okay. Um, and it's taken me to various countries that I would have never thought I would have gone to. Okay. So at what mm. age did you start doing photography? Uh, well, I've liked it from very young. So I would say from like around the age of eight. Okay. Yeah. So... Do you do photography in Ghana or elsewhere? Because I can get some accents, you know, coming mm -hmm. from yeah. you. Do you so, live in Ghana? No, I don't live in Ghana. I'm based in London. Okay. Um, however, Ghana is home for me. But how long have you been in London? All my life. Oh, okay. okay. All my life, yes. oh, wow. Well, well I, I guess that's why you, you, you love to do photography. Uh -huh. because, so, um, how long have you been in Ghana this time? 
I've been here for about six weeks now. Okay. Yeah. Have you been taking photos? I have. Okay. Do you have a lot? A lot. A lot. How is it like, you know, taking photos mm -hmm. in Ghana and taking photos in England? Um, well, I'm a, I'm a wedding-based uh, photographer. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, the weddings in UK is more intimate, mm -hmm. whereas Ghana, you know, Auntie Aggie is there. There's so many people. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just yeah. a mixture of everyone and anyone. So where do you there. enjoy taking pictures? Um, there's a lot happening in yeah. Ghana, Ghanaian weddings. Uh -huh. um, and like the decor, I mean, I've recently worked with um, Let's Be Seated. Okay. Um, and the decor that they done and just amazing the whole production up. was, yeah, it was yeah. amazing, amazing. Um, but, but, you know, so um, Jot Photography, yeah. what is your name? What's your, your name? My name is Jeffrey Osetut. Okay. Mm. But you, you chose to pick the first letters of yes. your yeah, JOT. It's like my initials. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know our, our own JOT here? No. JOT Ajma, you don't mm. know him? No, no. Okay. We need to reach out. Let's, you let's, should, let's you collaborate. should. I'm sure yeah, he's also an art person. You'll love him. Yeah, yeah but yeah. even the Jots could mean something else on the streets of Ghana. Yeah, I know, I, and I don't smoke, yeah. please. Yeah, let, me, let me pull it out there. I do not smoke. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So have you always wanted to be a photographer? Um, no. So funny enough, I wanted to be a like a software engineer. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. So okay. I, I kind of studied multimedia. Um, I done my first degree in multimedia. Mm -hmm. um, the grades weren't too great. Um, so I, I took on a challenge to do a master's degree, uh -huh. thinking that once I do my master's, I'll get a job. And then the financial crash happened in the UK. Mm. So I couldn't get nothing. And then I took photography serious. Right. And it just started building up. Um, I started getting more jobs. And, and then my parents just believed in me. Oh, they um, did? Yeah, yeah. They, they bought me my first proper digital SLR camera. Wow. Okay. Um, wow. So, yeah, thanks, thanks to them. Thanks, Mum and Your dad. parents live in England? No, they're based in Ghana now. And yeah. they understood I should be a photographer? Yeah, they after with, like, a lot of persuasion. So the first yeah. time you went <laughs> I mean, to them, yeah. I don't know who you went to, How your mom you or your dad, to them? and I, then you told them that I, I went, after my master's degree, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I yeah. just want to be a photographer. I think they saw the type of jobs that I was doing uh -huh. and then the kind of caliber of people that I was, I was meeting. Mm. Um, and then it just started progressing, and then from then they just okay, so they kind of gave in. spoke for itself. You yeah, didn't have to do yeah, much convincing. Yeah. Huh. Good for you. And I think <laughs> once you're once you're passionate about something, mm -hmm. like, and they see you like working on your passion, right. like my parents were like, okay, do what you're doing, and, right. and they just gave so. So how do you make money? You know, just by. Um, taking pictures at weddings. So if yeah. people are not marrying, if people are not doing big weddings, it means you are out of business or you do stuff on your own. No, there's, there's always something to document, whether it be a wedding, a funeral, birthday, corporate events. Mm. Um, yeah. There's always something to document. Some people just want artwork for their houses. So mm -hmm. when I travel um, to different countries, I, I normally take like landscape pictures and then I sell that mm. onto a, mm. a client so they can have it within their house. So you've been um, traveling yeah, yeah. around simply to take pictures? Yeah. So I've been to so many countries, mm. Ghana, Nigeria, Dubai, um, Italy, Kenya, India. Um, wow. That's probably one of my favorite trips. Really? How much yeah. fun is that? It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Very tiring though, um, mm -hmm. traveling, um, going through different time zones. Mm. But yeah, I, I, I fully enjoy it. But why, why is India probably your favorite? It's because it's densely populated and there's yeah, so and much action going on. There was on. a lot of stuff to like, mm. obviously, me being in London, I don't see what really goes on, if, unless you watch like news and other yeah. stuff. I, you don't really see what's going on in the, in the rest of the world. So you mm. kind of turn a blind eye. But when you're there, you're able to see stuff and mm. it's very, really interesting to you. Mm. So you start documenting what you see and stuff like that. So right. for instance, you come to Ghana and then yeah. you take a picture of the Adome Bridge yeah. and you frame it, how much will you sell something like that? Um, <laughs> it depends. Um, it depends on the size that the client wants. Uh -huh. So, um, But at least, I mean, everything considered, how much can you get for that? Pounds equivalent, it could anywhere between 500 to 1,005. Are you kidding me? Pounds. Yeah. So you are this taking these Bridge. kind of... Gosh, I to yeah, but it also depends on if they want exclusivi exclusivity. Uh -huh. If they want that, then it goes up because it means. What, what about exclusivity? So if I if I, if you ask for a print, uh -huh. like 
and you want the file, then it just becomes yours. I can't. But that will be great just for all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody can Maybe get it. Maybe we should it. call the so if, for him. If, I have the, if I have the file... Maybe we should call the Ghana Revenue. I mean, if you have the file, then what? You know? <laughs> if, I, if, like, basically, if, I, if you have the file, then obviously the exclusivity so is yours. So short I can't yours. do nothing else. You cannot reproduce yeah. it exactly. or sell it to anybody else. Exactly that. Okay. So well, yeah. I, I never thought there was so much money in photography. Would you let your children go into photography? Oh, yeah. If, really? If, yeah, if, if that's their passion. Wow. Mm. Yeah. What is the future of photography? What if? Well, we're going down the line of, I don't know if you've heard of crypto. Yes. Um, we've got something called NFTs, mm -hmm. which is a non-fungible token. Mm. Um, people are using that, like taking pictures and selling it. And I tell you, if you think the thousand five is a lot, things are going for like $3 million. Whoa. For one image. So we travel a lot, you yeah. know, we travel a lot. Yeah. How do we monetize our trips? Because we are just taking pictures and we are thinking of, our social media handles, you know, but now yeah. we, we are learning yeah, yeah. that we are really missing out there, so much. There's more to photography than Instagram and, and, and the rest of the social mm -hmm. platforms. Um, if you take it seriously, you can defi definitely monetize from it. Mm -hmm. um, if you build, even Instagram, if you uh -huh. build up your account to a certain level, you can monetize from that as well. Mm. So how, how do we do it? You know, so people are, it's not like, yeah. give us your secrets you know that <laughs> if you are um, giving some tutorials yeah. to people mm -hmm. i'm sure you train people yeah yeah exactly yeah. i'm sure you kind of organize workshop and stuff like that for people so for it we all have um instagram accounts yeah. for instance yeah. how do you monetize that with the pictures you are taking well i would say you use a instagram as a, as a shop so okay. for people to view your images mm. and then from there then you sell your prints on maybe like your personal own website mm. okay. to monetize from through that but like instagram is kind of a gateway yeah. just for people to see your, your artwork mm. and the stuff that you've got. Right. So have you had any formal training in photography? I have. I've spent a lot of money training. Um, I went to America to train. I've, okay. tra I've been to Italy to also do some training. And I've also had some great mentors. Um, Bob Pixel being one of them. Okay, um, go bless his soul. Um, he literally taught me everything to do with studio wow. work. But well, you knew him from Presec, right? No, I, I just, I was in London. London. I just sent him an Instagram DM and wow. we connected and then he, he just became, he was like family to me and oh, I was wow. like family to him. So, mm. yeah. so, so, so take us back, yeah. okay? Mm. Who really are you, your parents, you know, where you grew up, where you studied, yeah. your passion, your hobbies and how you became this um, photography, photography sensation? Okay, um, I'm Jeffrey OC22, um, based in London, South East, grew up in Kibrook, mm. now live in an area called Charlton, which is in Greenwich, South East yeah. London. Um, I, uh, my secondary school was t um, a place called, a school called Thomas Tallis, and my results there was atrocious. So when it came <laughs> to education, um, yeah, I was not focusing okay. at all. Mm. But why though? Um, I guess the circle of friends I had. Mm. Um, the circle of friends I had, they were, some of them were actually secretly learning at home. I wasn't. You see? Yeah. yeah. So you check your circle of friends. Mm -hmm. um, that's a key thing. But who were you living with in England? Because were your parents there? They were at there. The time? They're now okay. retired and they live back okay. in, in Ghana. So okay. I'm, I'm all alone. In, oh, um, I mean, you are, you are big mm. enough to be <laughs> yeah, on yeah. your own. Yeah, I'm, I'm based there by myself. But do you have any siblings? No, no siblings at all. Only so, child? Yeah. No, no, only child. Yes, yes. Well, I guess that's why you Your could afford to different. go astray, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 Only child. And they let child, you do yeah. photography. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But Look, I, and I also guess because of where they were, you know, the mm -hmm. orientation wow. they have yeah. and um, how things are. Because mm -hmm. here, I don't think that I want Adrian to come and tell me that, Mommy, I want to be a photographer. With all respect to photographers, yeah. maybe yeah. I don't understand the trade properly. Yeah. Well, yeah. but maybe if he is able to break down the figures for you. It's all about <laughs> figures, you know? So, of course, now that Doc uh -huh. is telling me about photography and how much you can even sell exactly. at Dormir Bridge, mm -hmm. you know, just an yeah. image of, not the bridge. Not the bridge yeah. itself, An of image course. of the bridge, you know? <laughs> I'm sure I can consider that. Yeah. Because, I, I you know. wouldn't say it's just the figures. Um, mm -hmm. It's the type of people you meet. Right. Okay. Um, I've, I've worked with uh, one of the presidents from, from Ghana. Who? Mm -hmm. um, Which one? John Mahama. Okay. Oh, great. And I've worked with um, the Sierra Leone president as well. Mm -hmm. So Which it, of them? Which one? It's, um, the current Mr. one? Or? Okay. Yeah. So it's the type of people that mm -hmm. you but also... But how did you meet John Mahama though? Um, through my mentor, Bob Pixel. Bob Pixel, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, through him. So, like, it's the type of people you meet yeah. at the end of the day. I've worked with um, David O. Um, mm -hmm. I shot his pro proposal. Right. Um, I've worked with... Who else have I worked with in Ghana? Jocelyn Dumas. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, I've worked with. Mm -hmm. But you don't live in Ghana. Yeah. So did you meet all these people through Bopixo? No, not so all of them. How? How did you meet Some them? Some of them, if they're in London, like it's for me, it's all about networking. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's how I ended up here. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I met um, AJ Safong at an event, which yeah is really like a high class event, and we networked and I ended up here. Great. Great stuff. So it's and now you know not to yeah. fall. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But which one do you enjoy most? I mean, what do you enjoy shooting most? Um, weddings. Because every, every wedding is different and it has mm -hmm. a different story. Right. Um, so I, that's what, now I would say it's about 85% of my work mm -hmm. is, is weddings. Um, so yeah, every wedding is different. So what, what's your thinking like? What's your thought process like going into a wedding to shoot? Um, do you go in with the previous experience or you're open? No, because I do weddings from like different cultures. Mm. I've done a wedding from um, a Somalian wedding mm -hmm. and the way they do things is totally different, different yeah. to like yeah. our Ghanaian or Nigerian, Nigerian weddings. Yeah. So it's mainly like um, you've got the bridal prep in the morning from prep. You've got like the ceremony, ceremony to reception mm. and stuff like that. So right. So, yeah. um, you have worked in England, you've yeah. worked around the globe, yeah. you are here in Ghana, yeah. you are a Ghanaian. I am. How do you think we can take photography to the next level, you know, because um, in our part of the world, when we yeah. talk about arts, you know, we are looking at music, yeah. film, um, and recently, yeah. poetry was not really a big deal, yeah. but our poetry is, so it means that yeah. the arts is growing in Ghana. Yeah. Now, yeah. photography, people are now beginning to appreciate, you yeah. know, yeah. pictures, because yeah. we believe that it tells better stories, you know. Yeah. But how do we, I don't know what your observations have been, yeah. being in Ghana, and what do you think we can do, you know, nationally not to sure. develop that? I would say, I mean, for me, personally, what I, with my photography, what I tend to do is, I want to tell a story. Mm. Um, it's all about telling a story with, with your images. Right. Um, funny enough, I'm, I'm a very shy person. This is probably like my second interview. But <laughs> I normally don't do that. Okay. Um, so I always let my photography or my pictures yeah. try and speak for me because okay. I'm not really a vocal person right. per se. So it's more about telling a story mm -hmm. with your image, imagery. Um, I, I have like slideshows of, of images of mm. like a wedding and it pieces it together. So anytime I send a client their images, I always send the slideshow first before okay. I send the bulk of the images. Mm. And then once they've watched it, they're like, wow, I've really relived my wedding moment through that slideshow yeah. that you sent mm. to me. And, and that's when I hear that, I feel fulfilled. Mm. And that's mm. like my main, my, my main goal. Right. right, so before we let you go, maybe we can take a picture. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, so um, we can use my phone. Yeah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> we've, we've got really good light in the studio as well. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> okay. Are you going to do it? I'm going to do it. Oh, no, you are going to do <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I mean, you're the one with the expertise. So. Of course. So yeah. I'm going to take your picture. All right. Let mm -hmm. me pose. That's it. Nice, nice big smiles right there. Hold that there. So you shoot on your phone. Yeah. What's the first thing you look out for? I'm looking out for the light. We've got like a little glare coming mm -hmm. from the light above. Right. So I'm going to come slightly higher up just to get rid of the glare. Mm -hmm. And then hold that there. Nice well, it. so this is a million dollar photo, <laughs> you know, taken <laughs> by no, Jack Photography. Yeah. Of course. I mean, for sale, so if you're interested. Right. And I'm just trying to frame it with the background as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice big smile, three, two, and one. Maybe if you had some color back in there, then no, <laughs> the new Jinya yeah. may post. <laughs> <laughs> the new Aquaba, welcome to Ghana. Oh, wow, picture. it's beautiful. <laughs> So, no, you're a pro indeed. Oh, I so don't. I, 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 mean, I will post this stuff. and I'll tell them that this is the photo that you took. Thank you very much. Great, great job. Great you. job. I mean, it's good to have you. Thank you for Thank coming you so through much for having interesting me. Really conversation. And I'm sure you guys must have learned a thing or two about photography the passion, the commitment, the zeal. Go out there and take some amazing shots. And of course, tag me when you do them. Yeah? This is the Upside Down Show. My name is Nana Tufo. And I am from Edinia Mi right now. Now, the man that we're going to be talking to in music, you know, mm -hmm. I have very good memories of him from way back. Yeah. You know, the first yeah. time I had an interview with him was about over 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, and he hasn't changed. He is still 
how I saw him way back looks then. Looks like you know. he grows younger. I don't know what he eats, you know, <laughs> and what he does. I'm sure he's going to give us those tips definitely, today. Definitely, of definitely. Yeah, We're yeah, going yeah. to be getting all that juice from him. He is a veteran and ace high life musician. He's been there, done it all, seen it all, played with all the greats you can think about. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, with a resounding round of applause, let's welcome the evergreen Bessa Silence. Yay! Who <laughs> <laughs> is? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome, 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 awesome. <laughs> great, great to have wow. you. Okay. Yes. Uh, but how, how come you're still the same mm -hmm. way, you know? You, you don't change. Is that right? Very right. Um, no, what oh, does your oh, mirror tell you? Beautiful Sorry. shoes, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your shoes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's thank the you. Timer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No. No. So. So. Back to the question. Mm -hmm. What have you been eating? How come you are still like this? Yeah. Well, I don't see myself. I think I have progressed in so many ways. Okay. You know? mm -hmm. um, I've lost a bit of weight. Okay. Uh -huh. um, which is good. Of course. Know? I was putting on too much weight. Mm. So now that is good. Um. What do I do? I. I. I can see myself getting. A bit older, mm. okay. you know. Uh -huh. um, but I, I don't know what I do. I eat the same thing. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I don't eat. And also, I, I'm not eating meat anymore. No more red meat. Oh, why? Okay. What, what was it? Uh, the, um, the doctor said I've eaten all the red meat that you I can ever eat. Yeah, you have enough to take you for the yes, rest of exactly. your life. Yeah. Right. Nice, nice, nice. So that's also helping. Mm. Great. Mm. And also, uh, I don't get the time to exercise, so I jog in my room. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. In your bedroom? Yes. I said literally. I said jogging, jog. jogging. I said jogging, jogging. I've been doing this for a long time. Or your jogging in, means in something else. No. <laughs> jogging. <laughs> jogging. Oh, I've been so doing this for do a long it? time. <laughs> Even when I, wall to wall. when I used to go on tour, uh -huh. I wake up in the morning, I would jog my room, you know, end to end. Mm. You know, oh, it, wow. it's, it's really nice. Try doing it. You <laughs> there are no cars, no horns, no nothing. You just do your jogging up and down. Wow. When wow. you finish your shower and then you move on. No, I like that. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice, I like nice. that. And you know, you would never have Vesa without his um, the, uh, earring. the ear start. Yeah. Of course. Ah. And you then had... of course the the goatee. Yes, yes. It's always been there. Right. So so um no it, it, this all means that we are excited mm. to have yeah, you here, super you know. Excited. And um mm. let's let's now look at the man Bessa Simons, you know, yeah. from when you were a child, I mean what was home like for you? How did mm. you grow up? You know, what um, kind of family did you? You would take up in us exactly. through all that until yeah. you were playing with Osibisa, mm. until you became part of musical hierarchy. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. until you became. I mean, what made you the big mm. artist that you are? Well, um, <clears throat> I grew up in this family um, uh, in Cape Coast. My dad was a musician. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, what was his name? My my dad was uh, Mr. William Bess Simons. Okay. He he played all his keyboards in the mm. church. Okay. And I nice. play mine outside. Mm. Well, outside no, it's allowed. You know, yeah. Daddy said yeah. I play for you yeah. in church. Yeah. But in in a very Christian home, mm. where you get up in the morning, Sundays, or we have our morning what prayers. Mm. You know. Yes. yes. That's the word. <laughs> No, you were playing outside. Yeah. So no, no. Worry. It's okay. You don't remember morning devotion. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, uh, it was like my dad would work during the week. Mm. Okay. Um, Sundays he would go to church and he goes to choir practice. And mm. I used to go to choir practice with him all okay. the time. Okay. So I was like this little boy with the, the big choir. Mm -hmm. mm. So they made my room very small boy. Oh, in okay. The, so you're part of the choir. I was yeah. part of Which the choir. Which church was this? Methodist, okay. right? Yeah, Cape Coast Wesley Church, nice. the biggest Methodist church in the whole world. Mm. Are you serious? I'm telling, you, not the biggest though, but it was solid. Okay, mm. okay. The music was good, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, big uh, preacher man, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. mm. Sofu Prad, Sofu Basal, you know, those yeah. kind of people. Yeah. They were very huge. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be, we'll come at home, and Sunday mm. afternoons, we have a Sunday school. Mm. Okay. Because our area, the people there were like they worship little gods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my mom introduced uh, Christianity, Christianity at that mm -hmm. area. Okay. Sudo Estate, very close to 
uh, the old stadium. Mm. Mm. And then we'll go around and ring the bell and everybody will come. Okay. My right. mom will make tea, bread and butter. Mm. And, so it's the tea and bread and butter they came for, not, the, not really the way. Uh, exactly. But you need a bait, you know, to <laughs> exactly. get them. Jesus yeah. even used bread and fish. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, now it's turned into one of the biggest church, mm. Methodist church in Cape Coast, oh. okay. church. Okay. So we started it from my home. Wow. Great. Yeah. Great. And uh, my dad used to teach music. So okay. people come and learn how mm. to play the piano, mm. sight mm. read and things. So, I mean, the family, we all, my brothers and sisters, everybody plays hymns on mm -hmm. the keyboard. Okay. I don't mm. know whether they still do. But How many are they? We are eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah. And right. you are number? Six. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a very loving family. Okay. Mm. I mean, ev all of us, everybody thinks my mom loves them more than anybody. Everybody thinks, you know, mm -hmm. they, they were <laughs> my yeah. mom's favorite. I don't yeah. know what, what, whether every family is like that. Everybody well, thinks. Well, I guess everybody yeah. feels they are the special <laughs> ones. Exactly. You know? yeah. yeah. So this is the kind of family and um, I just loved playing the keyboards mm. and music was so close to my heart. Mm -hmm. right. So all the pieces they played, I, I can play them mm. without sight reading, just listening. Mm. And so I remember when I was a kid, when we have visitors, they say, oh, come, come. At home, they call me Mark. Mark. Oh, okay. Say, Mark, come. Mark, that's a Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I said, come and play, come and play the yeah. keyboard. Then I'll go and I'll be banging away and everybody. Yeah. So at this time, you were playing more of church music? Um, or bits and pieces of everything? Bits and pieces, okay. but, but more church more music. Church music. Mm -hmm. Small, mm -hmm. a little yeah. uh, piano mm -hmm. recitals mm -hmm. and things like that. Then uh, um, what took me into playing uh, this? Yeah. I, I heard um, a song by... Uh, Millicent Small, mm -hmm. my boy, lollipop, and yeah. then you chop, you chop it like yeah. that, mm -hmm. and then it was so nice. Yeah. And so doing that got me into another kind of music, mm -hmm. you know. So that's how I brought right. all those mm -hmm. ones in there. Now, before we go deeper into music, you know, and getting a career out of it, let's look at education as well. Mm. So where mm. did you start school? You know, uh, did you at any point study music in the classroom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so I started from Methodist Primary B. Okay. okay. Uh, Cape Coast. Then you go to uh, the one we call Bakatsuri. Okay. Uh -huh, Bakatsuri. That is that? very close to St. Augustine's. Okay. Hmm. So you go to your primary school uh -huh. from Abum. Mm -hmm. Abum Wells Road. I'm taking you to Cape Coast. Of right. course. Do you remember <laughs> some of your teachers? Um, oh. The head teacher was uh, Master Asma. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I remember Master Asma with his hose and, boot, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then his the khaki shorts, shorts and yeah. white shirt, shirt with yeah. his pen in the socks. So, yeah, then, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And he would come and he was very nice. And Mrs. Anubil, mm -hmm. and class one teacher, I remember. Uh, Mrs. Brownfall. Okay. Um, who was that? This one teacher I really admire. I can't remember her name. Mm. So that was my elementary okay. school then. You go to the middle school for one year or two years, mm -hmm. and then you go to the secondary, secondary school. school. So it's just, Abakatsu is just a continuation from mm. uh, primary right. B. Okay. okay. Then after my common entrance, I went to Agri Memorial. Oh, mm. wow. Okay. So Amosa. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and um, from Amosa, mm -hmm. I went out to play with other bands. Okay. Then uh, my dad said, Hey, listen, if you want to do music, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But you have to go and, you know, know what it's all about. Have some certificate mm -hmm. or something. Okay. So I went to National Academy of Music, which is now a uh, Wilbur University. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so did music education. And wow. Then, um, finished. I did my national service um, at O'Reilly Secondary School. Mm. Oh, okay. This is something I enjoy, and I still teach. Okay. I love teaching music. I think I have a special way of teaching music. I can teach anybody to play the keyboards within three months. Wow. Are you serious? I'm wow. telling you. That's amazing. How? <laughs> Including me? Including you. Wow. <laughs> yes. you, must, wow. You, you must have one at home. Mm -hmm. Yes. So anything I teach you, you spend some time and rehearse in our home. Just master yeah. it a little bit. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. Within mm. three months, you'll be playing. Wow. Mm. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so when did music start for mm. you as a career? Yeah, professionally. Yeah. Mm. Wow. 
I would say, yeah. I mean, you know, those days uh, at secondary school, you have mm. school bands. Yes. Yeah. And that is where you get discovered mm. by the bigger bands in mm. town. Mm. So we, um, I played in Agri, um, the school band, which is uh, called Vox International. Okay. And we, I mean, I stayed at Cape Coast, so the, the uh, other musicians who stayed in Accra can wait. If we mm. know a big band is coming to yeah. play, mm. then we will go and we say we're going to jam that. Okay. okay. So, and <laughs> all our friends' fans mm -hmm. will stay. Mm -hmm. Instead of going home uh, for holidays, they yeah. will stay until we go and play. Yeah. And we'll go and make noise at Cape Coast Town mm. Hall. And, nice. Mm. You, know, you know, students, <laughs> those who drink will M drink. Must have been fun. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It was fun, mm. and and so uh, we will go and play, and that's where you get discovered mm. by the bigger bands. So it got to a point, but all those days it wasn't business; it was mm. just, fun. just fun. Yeah. And then uh, the band in Cape Coast called Pelicans. They mm -hmm. got their first keyboards. Before we didn't have keyboards, we have a uh, melodic. So we okay. play. Okay. Yeah. You blow the air yeah. into it, and then you play. play. Yeah. So they said, oh, there's this little boy who goes to Agri, mm -hmm. you know, try him, he can play. Mm -hmm. So I went there, you know, to jam with them. And, you know, seeing electric keyboard mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the first time, that was so fun. I mean, yeah. nobody yeah. could stop me. I would just go there. <laughs> can play imagine. Them. And yeah. just pop So in. on holidays, <laughs> yes. yeah, exactly. Yeah. On holidays, I would go and play with them. Mm. Until after uh, secondary school, then uh, my auntie, Mm -hmm. uh, Auntie Gloria, mm -hmm. uh, she came for me from Cape Coast. Uh, she was forming a band, okay. one of the biggest band with my idols. Mm -hmm. uh, th th these guys used to play a band called ba the Barbecues. Okay. okay, they were so big, all the students loved them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like Tommy Darling, Marshall, or Lion Car, mm -hmm. and so like they coming for me to play with them. Unbelievable! Mm -hmm. I tell you, so. I came all the way from Cape Coast to mm. Tema stay with my auntie. Okay. Um, auntie Gloria, she just, um, uh, she died last year. Oh, uh, we so had a uh, uh, one year uh, anniversary. Uh -huh. um, she's a uh, Kwekubaku's mother. Oh, oh, okay. That's my auntie. Okay. Huh? Oh, wow. So I came and played mm. in Tema. And so I stayed in Tema for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that is where it all started for me mm. as a career. Mm. You know, playing with these mm. guys, teaching me things that I didn't know, mm. you know, and things like that. Awesome, right. Awesome, right. awesome, awesome. So, I mean, professionally, the biggest shot started from Tema. Mm -hmm. From Tema, mm -hmm. that's right. So, I mean, what were some of the associations that, that came with it by virtue of you now being based in Tema? Well, I think uh, I met so many people mm. from and, and you know staying in Tema is a different ball game mm. mm -hmm. I think that is why musicians in Tema feel so special <laughs> because yeah. the seamen mm. we were based at a, a club called the El Paso oh, okay and yeah. the seamen will come there is, is that you, your trust station that's right yeah. that's right <laughs> the, the trust station was not there yeah yeah, yeah. and uh Seamen will come mm. there every time when we are rehearsing, mm -hmm. and uh, they will bring us new songs, new mm. records, okay. you know. Yeah. And so, when we are playing, they can relate to what we are playing. So, mm. by the time you even finish rehearsals, mm. the money that you get, yeah. you know, and other things, drinks, and you know, all mm. kinds of the treatments you get. Yeah. Business was good, it was very mm -hmm. good, mm. very good, you know. Of course, we were not doing it for the money, but we got paid, of course, yeah. yeah. You know? um, and also, you meet different kinds of musicians all mm. over Accra. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the BB bands, King Bruce was there, Rambless was there, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but we had come fresh. Mm -hmm. And this band, I came from Cape Coast because the keyboard player they wanted to rehearse with came and went back to Kumasi. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I came in with about two or three weeks for the mm. band to be launched. Mm. I tell you, that the moment I landed in Tamil, we rehearsed. We learned about 17 songs. Next wow. day, I couldn't remember even one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was too much load for you. Yeah. Too much. And also, coming from Cape Coast is a bit mm. slow. Yeah. Tema is fast, yeah. very yes. fast. That would be a good to be. I grew up before. Was there really any difference in the music you were playing in Cape Coast as compared to what you came to meet in Tema? Uh, not quite. Mm. In Cape Coast, the band I played with, Pelicans, was a big band. Right. Yeah. And uh, they used horns, mm. you know, about 
five horns, mm -hmm. you know, drum kits and mm -hmm. everything. And I mean, in Cape Coast, it was a very good experience too with mm -hmm. the Pelicans because n that was the first time I used to score for a band. Okay. okay. You know, so I would score for the horns, mm -hmm. the bass line. There's, of course, the singers were right there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then we would play. So it was, at one point, people would just come and watch me, mm -hmm. you know, in the band rehearsing and mm -hmm. showing them. Nice. And when we put it together, it all comes. So it was a, a good experience. But coming to a crowd, the difference was that it was a smaller band. Mm. Mm. So the keyboard would have to play all the horn lines yeah. and, and yeah. things like that. You know, and these people were fast. Mm. So you have to be fast. You need to catch up. Yeah. Right. Catch you up. Know, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so now um, you've always been a band person. Mm. Right. At what point, you know, did you join Osibisa? Was it later on, you know, and um, when did you also start releasing your own music? Yeah, um, let me see. You know, those days there were so many bands. Mm. Yeah. And bands were poaching yeah. from here yeah. and there. If you are good, mm. yeah. any good band wants you and things like that. But I stayed um, with one, two Azuri at the same place. Mm -hmm. From there, we move on to Wuta Wazuri, to the same place. Mm -hmm. Then come, came the Dutch Bengalos. Okay. okay. Dutch Bengalos was, you know, like uh, Auntie Gloria and. Uh, one ship owner called Ben. So mm. ah. Ben and Gloria, mm. Ben Glues. Mm. And the uh, Ben Glues was so good that I tell you, if we play at in Saom, mm -hmm. go and bring Michael Jackson, nobody will go to Michael Jackson. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> or Elmina. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. So from there, I also played with CK Man. Okay. Mm. And recorded with. Uh, C I played with CK Man because I wanted that big Baha life thing yeah. in me. Yeah. And you know, music is the life that you've led. Mm. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it all goes into yeah. that folder, your memory. And when you want to use it, all these elements will, yeah. you know, uh, flow. So uh, after C came and I played with another band called Kelke Shows. Mm -hmm. And I'm mentioning this next because a lot of people were followers of yes, this band. Yes. Yeah. And then I think the last band I played was uh, The Third Eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the third day, we were the band that started charging in thousands, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I remember Osibisa came to play in Ghana. Okay. And we opened the show for them. Oh, great. Oh. Third day is the band that Afro Moses played mm -hmm. in. Uh, Tony Mensa, Hope, Homeku, mm. uh, Osei was the drummer, mm. Pakwisi okay. okay. uh, was the bass player. And our, our manager was Francis Asiedu. He's, oh, he's, okay. he's back in town. Nice. So... This was the band that I played and I met Osibisa mm. uh, th that was in Ghana, right. maybe okay. before I went to the UK. Mm. Which nice. year was this, do you remember? Wow. It would be in the late 80s. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now, you know, you know um, Osibisa is huge, yeah. you know, Global very name. big, you yeah. know. I mean, these are people that you watch them from afar and you're proud that you're a Ghanaian, you know. Mm -hmm. And now you are part of this revered yeah. band, you know. How did this make you feel, you know, playing with um, the Mac Tontos, playing with the Kiki Jans, and I don't mm. know if they were still mm. part of the group that you played with. Yeah. How, how was it feeling like? Well, you feel privileged, mm. you know, and you feel humbled. Mm. Um, but let me say this, um, when we were at uh, the boarding school, Agri, yeah. mm. uh, Saturdays, you know, those days, televisions were fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every Saturday, the entertainment night, sometimes we watch the television, mm. watch the top of the pops. Okay. okay. And all of a sudden, we saw this group in a, a Ghanaian Batakari, yeah. yeah. nothing yeah. boots, yes. you know. And then they play, Aiko, B, I, you know, music for Gong Gong. Mm. And everybody was Yeah, there. energy. <laughs> energy. <laughs> so, you know, everybody like, all oh, the musicians mm. there, even the whole school. Yeah. So, ah, are they Ghanaians? Where yeah. are they from? Where are they from? You know, so people started yeah. researching and asking. Yeah. And then they found that they call Osibisa. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they have names like Saul Amafio. Yeah. Yes. We know he's a Ghanaian. Uh, yeah. This is close yeah. to home. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Teddy uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Mark Tonto, we were not sure. sure. Yeah. You know. And so. The name sounded got, more kind yeah. 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 So we were excited. <laughs> and school band started mm. learning all mm -hmm. their songs. Mm -hmm. All we needed was when they release any song, somebody brings it. Yeah, school band will learn it. So <laughs> we knew all these songs all mm -hmm. over. And it was like. 
our time, everybody's dream mm -hmm. yeah. to play with the uh, OCD yeah. And yeah. I think after Robert Bailey, who was mm. the original keyboard mm. player, Kiki Jan mm. also okay. took over. Took and when over. Kiki took over, it, it, it gave us hope mm. that, wow, if Kiki can do it, we can also do yeah. it. So we have to just mm. yes. be good and rehearse yeah. more. And so I, I think that is what happened. But when we opened for Sibisa, mm. they had a party for them and we played for them. Oh. Right. I remember my Tonto was just standing by my side. Mm. We were using a very nice Hammond dog and very mm. nice mm. sound mm. and you know. And that time I could play better than I played in oh, wow. places. <laughs> and uh, Mark was excited, you know. Mm. So we were talking and at the party, you know, mm. and he said, hey, anytime you're in the UK, come, come and see me, you yeah. know, come and see me. I said, okay, okay. And that was it. it beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. But so what was it like really performing with Osibisa? Yes. Okay, so when I was in the UK, I was at a place where Mark Tonto came. Mm -hmm. And Mark Tonto can remember people. You okay. know, once he meets you, mm -hmm. once, you know. Mm -hmm. And so he said, ah, I know, I you. know you. I know you. So I said, oh, yeah, Ghana. They said, yes. Hey, so we just got yeah. chatting. Yeah. And so he invited me to uh, Teddy Osei's house. Mm -hmm. And then I went there. That day when I went, Hugh Masakele also came there. Oh, oh wow. So <laughs> they were chatting in the other room, mm. and I was playing the upright piano, mm -hmm. you know, playing. And so at one point, they all came to see, ah, who is this guy yeah. Yeah. playing piano for a long time? He wouldn't stop. <laughs> uh -huh. So that is all wh when it happened. Mm. So I had a call. Uh, from uh, Teddy, mm. Teddy say, and he said, oh, what are you doing next weekend? Mm. And I said, nothing. I said, we're going to Spain. Would you like to come? I said, yeah, why not? Of you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I said, when are we rehearsing? He said, no, we are not rehearsing. Oh, wow. Any Ghanaian, any, any Ghanaian, every Ghanaian keyboard player knows Osibisa songs. Yeah. Oh, wow. And truly, I knew all the exactly. yeah. songs. Yeah. So that is when it started. And mm. I tell you, the experience mm. was unbelievable. I mean, amazing. we played at a hotel, mm -hmm. and it was packed. It was a sold out. Mm. And the people who came there, you see, these are very yeah. rich people. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the gigs they were doing, mm -hmm. which yeah. was yeah. very, very good. And, and they have managed mm -hmm. to fuse you know, Ghanaian music with everything. Mm. And it was so different and yeah. people loved it. Right. Yeah. Now, Uncle Bessa, talking about, you know, playing and, um, you know, moving around with your tour and stuff. Mm -hmm. My next question, you know, I actually want you to be by that keyboard there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. So you, you just moved there from okay. me now. <laughs> It's a right. time, huh? mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to find out from you mm -hmm. how you are able to create some of the pieces that you play. Yeah. Your intro, sometimes the yeah. solos that you play, you mm -hmm. know. When I listen to a song like Belimbi, mm -hmm. I'm like, Classic piece. you yeah. know, <laughs> I can sing uh -huh. the intro. Wow. And I'm like, do -do 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 no, 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 I mean, you are here, yeah. so. <laughs> and then the song flowed after okay so with with Belembe, uh -huh. i was just kind of um showing my respect to high life music mm. and all the great high life musicians that have benefited from like bo taylor mm -hmm. ck man mm -hmm. you know pat thomas mm -hmm. and so that is what what i did but um the real intro i was just you know kind of like as we told yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> That's amazing stuff, I mean. Menos 
Piece. Um, I think you just play, mm -hmm. you know, and also once you learn music and mm. you practice mm. and practice and practice, yeah. there is some time in every musician's time that life mm. they will practice at least. I, I remember some time in my life for years I practiced mm. seven hours a day because oh, wow. it's my profession. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, if you play outside in Ghana, it, to play with any band, it was one time I was playing with about seven bands mm. and they don't want time wasters. So you have to be sharp. You have to practice and practice. When you, mm. By the time you get there, you are okay. You are mm. ready, mm. you know. Mm. So music director comes and you are ready to go. So um, that is what, what I did. And so once you play, it becomes part mm. of you. Mm. Um, also, I mean, when you get like with keyboards or any, so when you get your fingering technique, Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Even no matter how old you are, mm. you can still mm. play, you know. Mm. And then you learn a few chords and you have to understand your music. Mm. You cannot do uh, music without having, you know, a little knowledge, at least the rudiments. Yeah. yeah. You Definitely. know, yeah. knowing that this is uh, maybe a diatonic scale, you know, mm. so you can pick these notes to play with. And the same minor chord can be a third, a mm. second, a sixth chord. You can super, superimpose it to mean something different. Now you sounded like a lecturer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like, like a classroom. You're just taking us to the classroom. Of course, no, love okay. it. But okay. let me ask you this question, you know. Um, from the way you are speaking, you know, mm. you really know what yeah. you're talking about, theoretically and yeah. in, term, in, in practice mm. as well. Now, you, you, you would think that we need people like you, you know, to man the affairs of music, music in yeah. Ghana. And you have had the opportunity to be there yeah. at the helm of affairs with Musica. Music, yeah. Why is our union still where it is? What is the problem? Because I think that when we look at people individually, everybody is a pro, you know? And, and so you would think yeah. that once you come together, we should have a fantastic unit, but that's not the case. What exactly is the problem with Musica? I think uh, with Musica, there are certain things the music industry, uh -huh. let, let, let's yes. uh, put it this way. There, there, there are certain things we should have done long time ago mm. okay. that we, we, we didn't do. Mm -hmm. right. We are behind time. Like mm. what? Like, I mean, for example, some structures that will make just once you get into the music. For example, I mean, the, the copyright issues, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, um, publishing and all. Publishing. Every, mm. All these things will have to be in place. So when you go, it's mm. there. Yeah. You just fill the forms and get into it. Yeah. Mm. We haven't done that, mm. you know. And I think it's about time. We go back and make sure everything we haven't done, take the uh, first step. Mm. You know, once you take the first step, the second step will follow. And, mm. then, and so that is what we haven't mm. done, you know, mm. for a long time. And what, I mean, for example, now mm. is dig digitization. We're yeah. in the digital era. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody is, is going there. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't. Mm. You know, and when are we going to start? You know, and these are some of the things I think we should put in place, mm. you know, which I mean, we, we have started, but it, it's like a lot of people too don't know what it is. So mm. we need more education, mm. you know, for people to understand that this is where you should be. Mm. I mean, for, for music, I mean, we still go to the office to uh, fill forms. Fill forms no, yeah. you can't do it on your on phone, phone if you are yeah. in a digital space. Exactly. You know, these are some of the things. If you want to register your songs, new mm. songs, Copyright, you have to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, if you go to Gamro, it should be everything yeah. digital. You know, you even should know your royalties before 
it comes, big, yeah. you know. Yeah. And these are some of the things we have, to, and we have to move very quick. Mm. Yeah. This is not the time for us to be fighting each other. It's the time for us to sit around the table. What are the things we need to mm. do? Mm -hmm. You know, get people with the knowledge. Hey, we want to do this. We haven't done how to do it. This is the expert. Bring him in. Yeah. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Fixed, fixed, mm. fixed. Mm -hmm. Before we know, we're halfway there. Then yeah. we, we keep going, you know, so that mm. the youngsters, the youngsters, only few of them are with the, uh, in the digital space, mm. yeah. you know, because I've traveled all over Ghana and we have musicians, talented oh, musicians, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm. And these days, you even with the streaming and YouTube yeah. and mm -hmm. things, it's mm -hmm. easier to market your yes. music, but you just have to know how to channel your mm. fans to you, mm. you know. And once we set all these things, uh, so you can sit in your house, do your music, market yourself. So you'll be, you'll be a big star in mm. China or somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. that's a start for you to, mm -hmm. you know, Role and I think because we haven't done that, mm. it's also uh, the, the the youngsters don't see why yeah. they should join, mm. you know, and we need them as well as we've the not big stars. Yeah. ourselves to be attractive enough for exactly. the up and coming. You know, mm -hmm. once they know that we have all these facilities in place, yeah. nobody will ask them to come. They will come because they know what they will get. They will get. Definitely. Yeah. Hmm. All right. You, you, I mean, you yeah. played more in a, in a band and then you did some solo. Which one did you enjoy most? Sorry? <laughs> playing in the band or with a band or doing your own stuff? Oh, playing in a band is fun. Playing mm. alone too is mm. fun. Um, what is it? If you play in a band, uh, you can experiment more with other instruments. Instruments, you know? yes. And then it makes it good because mm. you, yours is one contribution, exactly. another guitar. Yeah. Bass player, drummer, so it all comes together oh, to give you Charlie. that feeling. Well, so much, on a good day, uh -huh. after yeah. a show, mm. it stays with you. The feeling stays with yeah. you for about two weeks. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, wow. Wow. Amazing. So, so, Amazing. so you enjoy being in a band, you know, but, but we enjoy you at Bessa Simon doing uh -huh. music, you know. I have a band, you know. Okay. okay. The Besser Band. The, the Besser Band. band. Yes. Even this yes. Friday, yes. we're yes. playing at Plus 233. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Come, we'll yeah. come and see you yeah. there. It's one of the <laughs> best bands in Ghana. But before nice. we get nice. to Plus 233, mm -hmm. we can do our way to... Right. Just yeah, a little the, bit, you yeah, know, yeah, just put ourselves yeah. in the mood. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but okay. before you play, did you play the solo on CK Man Sambra? Uh, no, I didn't. You okay. didn't play that solo? No, I didn't play that solo. I played on Ajwa Yanki. Ajwa Yanki. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that, that, that settles yeah. it. I mean, we've been having some debate amongst uh, uh, ourselves in oh, some okay. corner about whether or not you played the solo yeah. on Saimra. Okay. But, but you know, after uh, Belembe, uh -huh. after we finished the song, I went to the studio. I said, I want to do the intro. Mm. And the engineer said, no, I have. I have the intro. I said, I haven't done my intro. <laughs> yeah, and I was just joking, like doing. Uh. That was a joke? Mm -hmm. That's my intro. That's the intro. <laughs> so after the song, I have to go and learn this. This wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, because wow. I just well, played it from it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he is the engineer. He knew how it sounded in here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Awesome. 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 Awesome.
Wow. Oh, be here every day. Oh, it won't be so many years. Hey, ba. Oh, be here every day. Yeah, ah, je. Oh, be here every day. Ah, je. It won't be so many years. Hey, ba. Oh, be here every day. Yeah, ah, je. It won't be so many years. Mm. For a proper, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, performance yeah, session. Yeah, yeah. Today yes. we were mm. just talking. Yeah, so we you need to come to back. So we just um, mm -hmm. enjoy you properly yeah. playing. Play and play. so we say a very big thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, this thank has you. been um, so insightful. Yeah. You know, yeah, very. And, and I always wanted mm. to ask about the intros, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> because it, it was just too yeah, good, you know. I mean, and I'm like, the Bell and Bacon kind of intro, how did they do it, joking. you know? You know, yeah. sometimes you, you hear you hear stuff like that, mm. you know, and it feels like the keyboardist mm. has about seven fingers yeah, per hand, yeah, you know, you're, you're because he's playing too many things at the same yeah. time. No, you are so talented, that is beautiful. and it's um, beautiful. we love you mm -hmm. for being Ghanaian, yep. for raising the, the flag you. of Ghana high, <laughs> and we know you will come back yeah. to do what Bessa does best. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Right, Thank so you. this has been the Upside Down Show on City TV. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Prima Edwinami. And mine is Nana Tufo. As always, be kind to your mind. We'll see you again. <laughs>